This video is going to cover the topic of the distributive property. Be sure to have your date and topic at the top of your page. We'll also put our essential question at the top. Our essential question is, what is the distributive property and how do we use it? The distributive property is a little bit hard to define on paper, but let's write down what it kind of is and then we'll talk about how we use it. The distributive property tells us that multiplying a number by a group of numbers added together is the same as doing each multiplication separately. That's a lot. Let's write that down. So looking at that, that probably doesn't mean too much to you right now. It'll be easier to see this with an example. So let's start with an example with an algebraic expression, something we've been working with. So we have an algebraic expression 2 times x plus 4. Remember that if we have a number in front of that parentheses, it means it being multiplied. Okay. So I have a group of numbers, x plus 4, and I'm multiplying all of that by 2. Right? What that means is that I have two of these groups. I have x plus 4 two times. I could also show that with a picture just to be sure I remember what that is. If I look at this picture, I have two x's and I have a total of eight circles, right, or a unit, eight units there. So I know that I could rewrite this more simply by saying 2x plus 8. This is me using the distributive property. So adding x plus 4 and then multiplying it by 2 is actually the same thing as having 2x plus 8. We'll look at another example here. So here we have the algebraic expression 4x plus 1 which means I have the quantity of x plus 1 four times. So I have this x plus 1 four times. Now I want to simplify this, right? So let me just take a look at it first visually. I can see that what I really have is four x's plus four units. Now we wouldn't normally do this with a picture. Right? So here's where we use the distributive property. If I have a 4 that's being multiplied by the quantity of x plus 1, what I'm really doing is multiplying my 4 times x and my 4 also times 1. That's where I get my 4 times x and 4 times 1, which is 4. I can do this without pictures. Let's see, I have an example here of x plus 5 times 5. So 5 times the quantity of x plus 5. What that really means is that I have my x 5 times, so I have 5 x's, and I have my 5 5 times, so I have 25. These are equivalent. I have simply distributed the 5 to both parts of my expression inside the parentheses. It's kind of like when I ask a student to distribute papers they pass them around, this 5 is getting distributed to everything inside the parentheses. Go ahead and do one without me. So let's do 7 times the quantity of x plus 10. How'd you do? Right. The 7 should have been multiplied by the x to get 7x's, and the 7 should have been multiplied by the 10 to make 70. Notice my operation is remaining addition on all of these. It is whatever it was inside the parentheses. We can also reverse the process through factoring, where we go in the opposite order. So I can look at this expression, 8x plus 4, and I can try to factor it to figure out what number was distributed to make this. To do that, I'm going to look at both of these numbers here and think about what factor right, they have in common. 8 and 4 can both be divided by 4. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that I can pull that 4 out in front of my parentheses. If I have 4 out here, well, 
8 divided by 4 was 2, so I have 2 x's still remaining. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So this is what it looks like if I had my um, process reversed, right? Because look again, 4 times 2 would have gotten us that 8x. 4 times 4 gives us that 4. So these two things, right, are connected. That was just a pretty quick overview of the distributive property. Right? Our essential question was, what is the distributive property and how do we use it? Um, we'll be able to practice this more together in class.